We're back in the garage to bring you the final episode of 2023. It's been a wild ride these past six months and we're finally bringing it all together. We're installing all the siding, moving out of the she shack, <laughs> closing up doors and shedding some light on the new year ahead. DIY friends, welcome back to my channel. Today is another episode of The Garage Build, a series where I take you along my journey to build my dream garage space. That includes a creative studio above. We are doing all of the work ourselves to save on costs, so I am taking you along for the ride, sharing all of my experiences, everything I learn, and maybe even some mistakes. Who knows, but it's all going to be shared right here. Friends, it has been a minute since I've last updated you all on the garage. Honestly, a lot has been happening behind the scenes, like a lot. Jeff and I work every single weekend on this garage and I have done my best to film as much of it as I can to share this crazy experience of mine. When we last left off, I we just finished installing all three garage doors and a bunch of insulation went up in the garage. So we, yeah, we're behind, but if you've missed any of the past episodes, I have linked them all up here for you so you can get caught up. I'm telling you though, this episode has a very happy ending. So let's get into it because I got a lot to catch you up on. So editor, roll the tape. Boop. Okay friends, it has been a wild ride to get to today with me filming. Jeffrey and I have been spending every single weekend working on getting all the soffits done. So we've been getting all these like the black inside pieces here, that's soffit and each each little teeny tiny piece is an individual piece that has to be placed up. But like, there's just so much that I had no idea that like we had to think about like everything, our garage gets these little corner trim pieces. Then we have to think of something called J trim, which is right here, this little white strip. So that's what's gonna hold some of our metal siding in. And then we have to set up the scaffolding so that we could go get the dormer finished. So we had the soffits to go that went here, but then we also had to do the soffits that went in the dormers, but they also went back here. And then that like bled into the, the roof. It was just, and each little element has like a metal piece that you have to cut and bend and trim. And it just, it literally took us weeks. Um, which is why I haven't been posting a lot about the garage because it's just taken us absolutely forever. Today, I got my dad here, Papa Burger, with Jeff and myself, and we are gonna start putting up the first siding pieces! This is the beautiful white metal siding. This is in the color Cambridge white. So it's not their like purest white, it's kind of like an off white. So it looks just a little bit more I don't know. I don't know. I'm not even gonna come up with a word, but it's not like that. It's just a little bit more creamy. So I, I think it looks nice. We actually have just one teeny tiny little piece already on our garage. So I'm gonna back up a little right there. That's the first piece of siding that went up. Dad and I are gonna put up some siding today and I'm real excited about it. Chit fun day! So we started cutting using the fancy nibbler, which is a really cool tool. I, I've talked about this in the past. We used it for the roof, but it basically just punches metal out very quickly. It's really fun. So we placed up the first sheet and uh, yeah, in three, two, one, there I go. I pinch a nerve in my back. Ooh, okay, hang on, hang on. <sighs> yeah. First sheet, I do have a bad back. Like I grew up with scoliosis. This is not new to me, but sometimes I just kind of, you twist the wrong way and my back just sends that gut wrenching, shooting pain through the entire body. <laughs> Talk about bad timing, but I was not letting this stop me. So uh, I did some breathing stretches and uh, we got back to it. At that point, I just did less lifting things and Jeff stepped in from what he was doing to help. 
We basically just worked our way across and we got five sheets put up. I mean, this was our first experience putting up this siding, so naturally it just did take longer. But look at that. So crazy, the first glimpse at what the future garage holds. It's so exciting. Oh, exciting. Also, I'm just gonna reiterate this because I know some of you are going to ask, especially if you are new here, why didn't we match the color of our garage to our house? Uh, well, first of all, because I hate the color of my house <laughs> and I am gonna paint it the same color as the garage eventually. So after that day, we basically just kept going. However, we actually decided to halt production on the front and instead focus on the back because we had rented this special skinny scaffolding, which, <laughs> which may I add, super sketchy scaffolding, okay? <laughs> so sketchy. <laughs> And we wanted to get the back done as quickly as possible. Jeff had been working on this part while that my dad and I had focused on the front, but with my back break, you know, yada, yada. But you yada, yada over the best part. <laughs> he came over, now we're in the back. First, we had J trim to put up, which basically the J trim lines the top and bottom and sides of the entire garage. They call it J trim because it kind of, it's kind of like in this shape, like a hook shape. And then the siding just kind of like fits into it, if that makes sense. So it's like whoop. <laughs> So I got that up and then we cut some metal siding to the shape of the dormer, which math woof. Thank goodness Jeff was there. Then I worked inside and just passed the sheets to Jeff through the window and trimmed it in there with the nibbler if we needed any adjustments. The skinny scaffolding was pretty tough. It's so awkward up there and there isn't a lot of space for two people, but we got it done and the little dormer section was complete. So we took it all down and it felt mighty good. How relieved are you to be finished with skinny scaffolding? It's like the greatest feeling in the world. On a scale of one to 10. 15. Wow, 15. Yeah. That is so relieving. It's all coming together, woohoo! And now we get to do that all over again up there. <laughs> okay. At that point, we kind of just kept moving, making special cuts here and there for our lights or building angles. We got the entire front side done, and literally for three weekends, we just kept doing that. We were cutting sheets, we were marking the screw holes, we were pre-drilling them, and then we just put them up. <laughs> and then screwed in an enormous amount of screws like an unthinkable amount of screws, like over and over and over again. Ah! <laughs> okay, now we just built scaffolding again. <laughs> Can't wait! And it was so hard because our days were getting so short by 4 p.m. It was basically dark and extremely cold. So we were kind of forced to quit much earlier than we would have wanted to. Uh, but that's just the way she goes. It's the time of year. All right, now we go to the back. And we just kept going. We got actually pretty fast after we knew what we were doing. And I gotta say, those sheets are not light. And my goodness, between having to build the scaffolding what feels like a million times and lifting those sheets, I feel like I was like a part of a CrossFit class that I didn't sign up for. You know what I mean? <laughs> Can you see my muscles? They're there, I swear. <sighs> yeah. Good morning, friends. It is such a rainy day today. 
Not the greatest day to do the things that I want to do, but you know what? We're forging forward. We got to get her done and uh, the time is ticking because it's getting cold. But let me show you because it was so dark, but Jeff and I have been able to get done all of this side. Look how good this looks. How amazing. And we were able to do the back. It's so big. Look at this. Look at all of that. It was hard to see at nighttime when we were working on this, but it's all done. So we only have one side to do and then we're done. Um, and then we can start working on the electrical inside. One thing I haven't talked about is the electrical. You guys have probably noticed that I've had some working tools in here. What we did was we ran what was the original electrical that was running to my she shack, which wasn't a lot. And we just ran that line to the garage. So I basically only have currently two plugs up here <laughs> that I've been using to build in here. It's going to change eventually, but we need to change out our panel in the house and it needs to get approved. It's a whole thing. And I don't think it's going to get approved until February. So we're waiting. We're just getting by, but we will be able to hook up some ceiling lights in here so that I can work. One thing that I need to focus on today. So this door here is going to be a roll up door. Like, you know, the type of um, little garage doors that like roll up at the top. That's what's going to go here. We couldn't find the right one. Like I couldn't find the right color in time and I'm not going to rush it. So our plan is to actually just board it up. I have some boards here and we're going to board it up, but I have to do that today. The the, the goal is so that it's insulated is we're gonna board it up on this side. I'm gonna create some studs that run down the center and then basically just like block it in and then I'm gonna stick insulation in it so it is still insulated for the winter and then come spring, we can take it down and then start looking for the solution of a real door going in this space. But it's all we can do right now. Say la vie, she ain't pretty but she's gonna work. <laughs> so before I start closing this up, we need to get into the she shack because uh, it's got a bunch of tools in here that I'm gonna need over the winter and I don't wanna be going back and forth, trudging through two spaces to find my tools. Oh my God, there's no lights in here either anymore. <laughs> oh, it feels so good to be in this space. I just like, I kind of weirdly get emotional every time I walk in here because this space was so, transformative for me as a DIYer. Like I grew so much in this space. I learned so much in this space and like, it's kind of, it's bittersweet in a way. Like just seeing this wall and all the color uh, just brings me so much joy. Oh, my DIY progress sign. I can't wait to bring that over. But I have all of my tool boxes down here and I want to bring all of these into the garage because A, great storage B, I want access to it and like everything just needs to get reorganized it is a hot mess and I do not want to go into the winter season feeling like this is going to be a hot mess and I think that the she shack is going to be a great place to house a lot of things for us um things that I know I'm not going to need over the winter but I will will want come spring so this space is going to be knocked down once we're ready so probably by summer of 2024 we'll be ready to knock this down but like we're not there yet so we're gonna be using this for storage Woo! this is gonna be fun so basically we just need to get set up and uh, we need to start moving things over so let's go organize and let's see what stuff I have I feel like this is gonna be a very challenging thing to do while it's raining outside but we're gonna do it anyways no rain is gonna stop us today let me tell you <laughs> an up or a down situation. Drawer number one. Love that for me. All right, drawer number two. What do we got in here? Oh, okay. Some more gloves. Hey, that's where that went. Ooh, that's where this went. Oh, and that's where this went. Oh, Jeff and I were looking for this. <laughs> I'm just gonna straight up say, this organization day was just chaos. My nose is running. It was emotional and chaotic and happy all at the same time. Yep, using my foot. Okay, we're doing it. No! <laughs> There's ear sponge. 
sponges everywhere. You would think that's it, but it's not. Why was that so challenging? I got this. Do I have like a call a friend line? <laughs> now, the question of the day is, where did Danny put the original hardware to attach the wheels? I don't know. <laughs> Just ran to the store, had to go buy new hardware so I can install this because I just am a hot mess. Closing her up. Not gonna lie, this has been pretty exhausting. I don't even know if I have time to reorganize everything. It was more just about getting it in the garage, but I'm gonna try to reorganize some things, I think. I'm gonna have to reorganize all of the wrenches and screwdrivers and stuff that lives in this top drawer on another day. It's just not today. Let's start cleaning. Although I didn't get the chance to really organize anything the way that I had wanted to, I did get a chance to figure out what was important to stay or go. And I was excited to finally get my DeWalt chop saw set up. Oh my gosh. I've actually had this saw for a really long time now. It was given to me after my stepfather Vince passed away. So it feels a little bittersweet to be excited about it. I think it's primarily why I didn't set it up for over a year. Um, it's a much better saw, but I think I just kind of couldn't face it because I knew it would just remind me of him and I just, I needed time. So I am really excited to celebrate Vince and, and have his old tools in here now. It feels like just a little bit of him is in this space. When I look at it, I think of him. So it I just, I'm happy to have it in there now. I'm glad I took the time before setting it up and um, I'm excited to use it moving forward. <laughs> After I was happy with where things went, I finally moved on to closing up the doorway. This was pretty challenging by myself in the pouring rain, uh, but I never let these challenges defeat me. There is always a way. You just need to be determined to make it happen. So I got to work. I started by creating a bunch of stud braces that would match up to the braces on the inside with some old two by six boards that were left over from the garage build. I screwed these into the plywood board measured and cut the top piece, then added a second brace to make up the full width of the opening and then attached front braces to those. Basically, my goal was to just pull the outside boards and hold it in place with the inside brace uh, because I had nothing to screw into from the exterior. It was all metal siding, so I had to do it all from the inside. After that, I got the top piece screwed into place, then added some DAP barrier spray foam to the bottom that was against the gravel just to stop any unwanted drafts, water, or pests from easily getting in. Then between each stud, I just stuffed it with insulation, which was great and it was gonna keep me toasty warm over the winter. Friends! Sorry for the bad audio. My audio died, so uh, we're going on camera, but my goodness, look how dark it is. <laughs> uh, I would say the installation install has seen some better days, but I was using scraps from when dad and I put in all this. So I was trying not to have to open any new insulation because we're gonna need it. But uh, you know what? I think she's good. She's closed up and well, it looks better from outside. I'll show you what it looks like from this side. Like that looks much nicer, doesn't it? 
still raining out. Not a nice day. Good morning, friends. Guess what? It's not raining today, but it is cold, but it's not raining. Well, it actually might rain, but let's move past that. I want to show you guys something I bought last night. I got it off Facebook Marketplace. I've been on the hunt in the market for a new bandsaw and somebody had one for sale for a really great price. It wasn't the right size, but the price was so good that I couldn't say no. Um, and ironically, it ended up being at the place that I did the estate sale for where I found my paper cabinet. Weird, right? Um, I guess the people who bought the house, they weren't woodworkers, so they're selling off all of the equipment. And uh, this guy got to win again, so let me show it to you. Here it is, friends. My brand new bandsaw came with a stand. Got it for 150 bucks, which was a steal. It's a 10 inch Dremel, two speed uh, bandsaw, nothing fancy, but you know what? It is going to do the trick. It's in perfect condition. It was very well taken care of. As you can see, like the person who did the woodworking was like a carpenter. So it was very well taken care of. And I love that it comes with its own stand. So now it can kind of like live back here for now. Um, and I think it's perfect. All those projects that I've been using the jigsaw for, can finally be replaced with a bandsaw, which is so exciting. Also very excited for today. You want to know why? We are gonna install some electrical in the garage today. Yes, you have no idea. Well, you do have some idea because you know how dark it gets in here, but oh my God, it's gonna be so good. So let me show you what we're installing. First of all, this guy here. So this is the LED High Bay Light Hero Series from a brand called Hyper Light, which have graciously donated this and this light to me. So this is what it looks like. They are super bright LED lights. They're plug-in, which is kind of amazing. So you can put them anywhere. And then on top of that, I have this guy here. So this is the Hyper Light LED Wall Pack Light in the Moon Series. So as you can see, it like has like a little half moon shape. So these are gonna go above our door here. So one moonlight is gonna go here and one moonlight is gonna go there. Second exterior light, I've already outlined this light here. These are the lights that are gonna go on the front out here, which is gonna be amazing. So that's what's gonna hang on the front. There's gonna be three of them. I love that it's going to break up you know, all of the white, like having this black light here. So I think it's gonna be perfect. It's really just, oh, I can't wait to install it. I don't know if we're gonna be able to get them in today, but we're definitely gonna have the electrical ready. And then on top of that, <laughs> I asked Jeffrey if we could do some Christmas lights on the garage, cause I thought it would be fun. I decided because I've been making a lot of the design decisions, I would let him pick the Christmas lights, whether we go white or multicolored or whatever, it was his choice and he picked multicolored. <laughs> I probably would have gone white, but that's okay. We're, we're going with his option, it's, this is for him. Uh, so we have the 100 uh, multicolored LED lights here. They're little teeny tiny guys, but we're gonna put them around the garage door. So we got three packs cause we needed over a hundred feet. I couldn't believe it. We needed so much because what we're going to do is just line the garage doors. So it'll probably start over here and then go around the garage door. So hopefully we'll be able to show you what that looks like by the end of this video. So I'm just waiting for Jeffrey to get back and then we're going to start wiring and uh, I'm excited. This is huge guys. This is huge so slightly underwhelming but because it wasn't raining and we realized it was supposed to rain on sunday it was currently saturday we actually just decided to hold on the electrical and get the last side of the garage done so we did that instead i don't think i need to over explain this process after seeing it Every other side done, I think we get the drill at this point, but uh, we did only accomplish the lower half and added the gable base strip, which basically is a trim that breaks up the sheets from the lower half and the upper half because the sheets aren't big enough to span the entire length of the garage. So this gable base basically helps hold the bottom sheets in place and provides the above sheets a place to sit on. So we got the rain we were expecting and you know what that means, electrical day! Yeah, yeah, yeah! <laughs> so I set up one of the hyper lights to give us some light in there 
because it was so dark and we basically just started measuring out how much wire we were going to run and then it was time to start cutting holes in our walls. I don't think I like doing electrical very much. I first needed to fit an electrical box into the wall, which meant we had to cut back the wood that was behind the plastic covers I'd originally installed. So I just used my multi-tool and we got to work to fit this box in. Hello? Hi. Hi. <laughs> this is where an outdoor plug will live. And off that, we ran a wire and using a spade bit, we cut holes through our framing so we could feed the wire through, which also connected to all three of our exterior lights on the front. Which again, I needed to cut out the wood backing now on a ladder. Joy. Then Jeff got up there and just started to do all the rest of the wiring. And it wasn't long before we had all three lights up and I gotta say, those lights look mighty awesome. So while Jeff got working on making the inside wiring work, I got to work on installing the first exterior plug. This was actually my first plug I've ever installed electrically, so that was fun. I did need Jeff to guide me a little, but the basics were there. I mean, black wire to the black side, neutral wire to the neutral side, and ground wire to the green screw. Easy peasy, electrical squeezy. Yeah. <laughs> All the outdoor plugs also got a little cover box on them to protect it from the elements. Look how cute it is. Did I mention it was really cold out? <laughs> All I had to give me life was this little teeny tiny heater. Okay, so we're putting receptacles up there and there's gonna be another one up in the front. It's right there. Wow, you worked fast. You can see how they show you how the lighting is going to go. And then this is the placement in the garage. I'm going to go outside and start setting up the old Christmas lights. Yay! <laughs> and while Jeff stayed busy inside where he was nice and dry, I battled the elements to bring some holiday spirit into our lives. This was actually my first time putting up holiday lights like ever in my life. <laughs> Uh, and it's not challenging to set up, but like, man, those little light clips, they're hard. They give you all these different options on like how to secure your lights. And I just didn't really think I got the technique nailed down until the last garage door. But I think it's going to be fine. I don't think the lights are going to go anywhere. Hallelujah. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. Yada, yada. <laughs> Now, while Jeff was focusing his efforts on connecting all the wires to the switches, I focused on getting all the lights hung and plugged in so we would be ready to turn on the lights when Jeff was finished. So to talk a little bit more about these lights, this LED light is part of the Hyperlight Hero series. It's a plug-in light with a dimmable option, which we are definitely taking advantage of later on. It comes with a hook and safety line. It's made of pure aluminum. Now this one is 100 watts, but it comes in four options if you need more. Color temperature wise, I got mine at 5,000 Kelvin. They do have a version that is 4,000 Kelvin, which it's a little bit of a warmer uh, light, but for a workshop, I just wanted the most natural light I could get in this space. So why I actually really like these lights is that they do not flicker. So on camera, we don't get that weird like strobe light, which is perfect. And it comes with an acrylic reflector, which I didn't get. I'm not sure I need it yet. Um, I just wanna see how they look and feel with the dimmer on them first, but at least I know it's an option for me and they look kind of nice. So I don't know, it's an option down the line, but um, we just need to get these lights in there first. <laughs> And finally, we did get the first set of lights hooked up for the exterior, oh, and it felt so good. They're on? Oh my God, our outside lights are on. Look at them. That's so fun. Okay, so I have the wrong light bulb in this one, clearly, but that's okay. <gasps> We're festive people now. Isn't that fun? Although Jeff comes off as a holiday Grinch, I know he was super happy about those holiday lights. He just, he was just tired, you know? We all were. <laughs> but we did get the other switch on and the big reveal was here. 
Are you ready? Wait, we need to turn this light off. I'm gonna unplug this and then turn this light on, okay? Ready? Ready? <laughs> it's so bright. Whoa. They're like giant orbs. Okay, we need to go to the studio because there's no way I'm wrapping up 2023 in this video in this studio. So let's go. Here we go. <laughs> Look how bright this is. Can you see me? Can you see me? Can you see me? I think you can. <laughs> Yay. Okay, I got a heater running, but like check this space out. I'm like so shook. This, it's so great. I've actually had time to clean up the tabletop now, so we're not just looking at a bloody mess, but like this space is huge. I can't believe that I'm going to be on the other side. Like eventually my whole workshop is gonna be way over there. But for now, this is where I'm gonna be situated for most of 2024. Uh, probably won't be starting the downstairs until I would say late spring, maybe into the summer. My main focus is going to be upstairs. So I'm starting in the new year. The first garage project is going to be me tackling the upstairs, getting the whole space insulated, starting to build walls, getting the electrical in there. There's gonna be an office up there. There's going to be storage room and a whole new studio space. And then once that's finished, then I'll be coming down here to start the workshop. But when it's a little bit warmer and the weather's nicer, we can open up the garage doors. But I do have all of this space to start working on all of my wood projects. Like we are ready to go for this winter. Electrical still needs to be updated. But as of right now, we got the basics. I can run a saw, I can plug in tools. <laughs> we can see the projects that I'm filming. So I think that's all that matters, right? And there will come a day where I will stop looking at this insulation and same for you. But we just have to look at it for a little while longer, friends. Just a little while longer. I don't believe that when I see it. Also, I think Jeff and I are gonna try to get a dimmer on this light um, just to bring it down so my forehead's not like blazing hot. <laughs> it's just, it's a dream come true in here, honestly. It feels mighty good. It feels mighty good. Well, DIY friends, I never thought in a million years I would be building an entire structure like this and I'm standing in it right now and I just, I cannot believe it. I'm just, I'm proud of myself. I'm so proud of Jeffrey. I'm proud of Jeffrey and I together. I mean, <laughs> We got married last year and then went into an entire garage build. So if that wasn't a test of marriage, I don't know what was. <laughs> Thank you so much from the bottom of my heart for all of the love and support. You need to know that it means the world and I can't wait to grow this community. I can't wait to see what 2024 brings. So tell your friends, tell your family members that they love to DIY, then come on over because we like to do the weird stuff and we like to celebrate the weird because the weird is your magic and your magic is your creativity and your creativity is what gives you life. It's what makes you unique. So celebrate it. Of course, sending some love to my Patreon family, my DIY family. You guys have just been the best experience for me. You are my friends. I love speaking to you every day and sharing all the behind the scenes and all the projects. The support you guys give is beyond anything I could ever compare to. And I love you all so much. We are going to be doing a fun DIY challenge starting in January. So if you are not a part of my Patreon and you want to get a part of some DIY challenges to boost our creative energy, then make sure you sign up and get in there because we're starting January fresh. Sending so much love to everybody. Happy holidays and I will see you in 2024. Stay positive, stay creative and keep on DIYing. Bye-bye.